previously on Illusion of Gaia. Let me stand next to your fire. Let me stand. Hey, let me stand next to your fire. Well, hello again, and welcome back to Nathan Plays Illusion of Gaia. I am Nathan, and this is Illusion of Gaia on the Super Nintendo. Last time I got uh, pretty badly stuck, as you might recall. It was uh, kind of ugly, and I spent a lot of time just running around doing absolutely nothing, hoping for uh, some forward progress. When I started the game up this time, I wasn't sure if I would be able to make any progress whatsoever, but I thought I would record and just see what happens. So let's dive right in. Spoiler alert, uh... I do manage to figure it out. And it didn't even take that long, to be perfectly honest. But it was a thing I could have very easily missed, I think. And I did very easily miss it, as a matter of fact. So starting off again as uh, Free Dan, we are in the rather uninspiring uh, diamond mine here. Uh, just w rock walls and boulders everywhere. I headed back downstairs to the area that I'd been stuck in before. Decided to start on the right this time, and uh, actually, first of all, I decided to carefully check each of the corners of the room to make sure I hadn't somehow missed another secret passage. I was looking for his hair to be uh, flowing in the wind or his cape to move or something, but that didn't occur. Check the door again. Yeah, without both keys, it still won't open. And I checked my inventory one more time. No, nothing there that I missed. So it was time to take a wander all the way around this room. I painstakingly checked each of the uh, sides before getting fed up and heading back out. The game is pretty linear, and so using that logic, I felt like whatever I needed had to be past the first obstacle, like the, the locked door upstairs. So I came back to the morgue and started meticulously checking each body in the room, trying to move them, trying to uh, interact with them using the attack button, and uh, wasn't really getting anywhere. Um, I wasn't really expecting to, but I thought, you know, somehow maybe I, maybe there's one that you can roll over or loot or something. It was, uh, again, just sort of experimenting with what I could find, and then, wait a second, what was that? A tiny sparkle in the corner of the room that I almost missed. I waited, and it happened again. Well, look at that. You found the mine key. Ugh, at long last. I actually don't have the official tally on... Uh, I, I did a little happy dance there. I don't have the official tally on how much time it actually took me to figure that out, but it was uh, it was, it was a, a badly, a stupidly long time. Just once I would like to record a video in which I don't get stuck on something really dumb. Anyway, I used the other strangely ornate uh, mine key to open up this last door and head into the final area. What am I going to find? Big boss? Another demon? Nope. It's, uh, some laborer children. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll cut the chain for you there. So this is Remus. I believe we met back in the labor market. Uh, he tells me a little bit about his village and how I should head there to re help them regain their strength. They, they did tell us a little bit of their plight earlier. Uh, Imus is here as well. He, uh, wants to talk about all how all the living things in their home country have grown strange. Yeah, you and me both, buddy. I know that feeling. People are very sick, and that's no good. The last one, I cut the chain, and... Hey, it's Sam again! You remember Sam? We found that note of his while we were stranded on the raft. And then, later on, we met him in the slave market. I mean, labor market. Hi, Sam! Good to see you again, buddy. He heard from our friend Eric that our friend has lost his memory. Legend says that there's a song that brings back the past. Please let him hear it. So he hums me a nice song. I've learned the memory melody. Well, that's a nice song. Oh, oh, you need a favor, buddy? After I freed you from the diamond mine and cut your chains and such? He wants to have the prison key and the melody of the wind as a souvenir of our meeting. Well, I don't know how I'll give you a melody. I'll, will I just forget it or what? I'm sure I'll never use it again. Well, why do you want it then? Uh, without really giving me an option uh, to agree or disagree, I apparently handed those over. So enjoy that. I just flushed that uh, mem melody of the wind from my memory forever. Who needs it? He'll never forget me. 
they had nothing else new to add to the conversation, so with that, I just uh, did one last check here and decided to head all the way back out of the mines and back to the village, or to Frigia, rather, the city, I guess. It's really not, not a village as such. Once in Phrygia, I returned to the hotel to check on how my friends were doing. They're pretty much the same. So I decided to cut to the chase. They're all just hanging around a table. They love hanging around tables, these people. Cut to the chase and play the memory melody. I began playing the melody I remembered. Pretty good. Heard it once, can faithfully reproduce it. And when I complete the melody, Everybody trips out. It's a huge experience. <laughs> Somehow I feel a little homesick. Yeah, man, I got the munchies, something fierce. Whoa, Eric, too far back, too far. Get back to us here. This is gonna turn real bad for you real quick, I think. Yes, the melody of memory uh, unlocks everyone's uh, repressed and weird and forgotten memories. Lance kind of info dumps about his missing dad. We all seem to have daddy issues in the game. It's kind of interesting. Kara reiterates her anti-war stance uh, on behalf of, uh, or not on behalf of, I suppose, against her, uh, her father's wishes. Which, does he even know where his princess daughter is right now? Probably not. Are we gonna run into an international incident because of it? Probably. Who knows? The trip ends and we all return to the hotel table. It's a nice table. Looks very solid. Lance is like, what? And after a brief, awkward pause, he realizes that his memory has come back to him. That's kind of sweet, I guess. You don't mean it, Kara. Does anyone, uh, I noticed just now that they're all just standing on their stools. Does that seem odd, or no? So I talked to Lance again, and and then I talked to Eric, and he's like, well, there's an eccentric inventor in the woods nearby. Shall we go? Well, Eric, <laughs> that's kind of random, isn't it? <gasps> Did you say Neil? That's the same name as my lost cousin, conveniently. My cousin Neil, the inventor, flew in the sky in the thing called an airplane. So, Will and his group went to the inventor's house. I don't get a say in the matter, just off they go. There's an inventor nearby. Okay, let's go check it out. I suppose, actually, in that situation, I might just say, yeah, all right, let's go look. Yeah, he's right there. Neil's cottage, look at that. Neil's cottage is in a bit of a state, as you can see. And uh, we enter, and he makes kind of an odd remark here. Oh, Will, you've gotten strong. Actually, I'm kidding. That's not odd at all. That's how I greet everybody. Oh, hey, Mom, what's up? You've gotten strong. Anyway, some of the members of my party make a few comments about the general state of the place and the smelliness of Neil. But uh, he claims that uh, when you're wrapped up in inventing something, you don't care about your appearance. This is a bit of, uh, this is humor, I suppose. This is, uh, comedy in the game, so. Need some more of that. Kara is simply disgusted. But, uh, Neil doesn't mind. He invites us to make ourselves at home, so everybody gathers around the table. It's the one thing they're comfortable with, I suppose. So I talk to Neil. He says it's been about two years since we last met, and that he's invented lots of things since then. Actually, four of them being his best work in the room. So I went to check it out. First one was over here. This is a camera, apparently, whatever that is. Airplane wings was invention number two. And an oxygen tank, although it's only good for a minute of air, but whatever. And lastly, a telescope. You can see the stars as if they were in your hand. 
Wow. Uh, so I talked to him again, and uh, Will dumps the whole story about how he's on a quest to find ruins and mystic statues and things, which Neil thinks is interesting. I, too, have some interest in ruins. They have something in common, the ones all over the world, he says. If you draw a line to them, it looks like a, makes a shape like the constellation Cygnus. Cygnus? Sorry, I should say it more like Solid Snake. Cygnus! Metal Gear! Anyway. The red star that everybody's been talking a lot is uh, part of the constellation Cygnus, or just below it, rather. And Neil thinks it all fits together. They're all bound together organically. Can't quite say I see it, but if you say it's true, it probably is. Uh, the Nazca line, uh, the Nazca ground paintings that are somehow figuring into this are, are weak from here. So, uh, do you want to go? Sure, why not? Actually, the uh, Nazca lines have a uh, real-life parallel. If you go Google those things up, N-A-Z-C-A, you'll find them in Peru. And the ones in the game actually bear a striking, or the one in the game, bears a striking resemblance to its real-life counterpart, so that's kind of interesting. From Neil's cottage, we all set out in bowling pin formation. To... Nazca. Valley of the Wind, or something. So that journey was about a week, which means I've been drastically underestimating the uh, amount of time it took in the rest of the game to get anywhere, really. It's kind of impressive, actually. It's been weeks and weeks since we left home, I think. And not to mention the 20-some-odd days that we spent on a raft. No one knows why the ancient people drew things like this, and apparently Neil just comes out here to just kind of relax and chill, and tells everybody to go check it out. So they do. They scatter. My job to find them and round them back up, I guess. Eric doesn't like it. It's scary. So I headed over to find who I could find. First of all, Kara, who thinks, Well, when you look at it this way, it's like the white lines at an athletic event. That is a scintillating addition. Thank you very much. Definitely solving the problem of the ruins with Kara's help. Wandered around a little more aimlessly and found her again at a rock, who says that this is the condor's stomach and makes a joke about being able to dig up eggs here. Thanks, Kara. Real addition to the team. Real help there. Two of my other friends are uh, mentioning that there seems to be a pattern in the way the rocks are strewn about here. And Lance is having kind of an existential crisis about doing nothing with his life. You're 12, Lance. Don't even worry about it. Save the existential crises for later on, like in your 20s, for instance. Uh, not really sure what else to do, so I wandered around a while more and I came across... Oh, interesting. It seems to want me to follow it. Taunts me a little bit. Coo, coo, coo. And then heads off in a direction. Kind of just flies away there. Couldn't find it, but I thought I would reconvene with my team and see if anything had changed since finding that ghostly skull. And, turns out, they're all gathered again. Hooray. So obviously I triggered the right thing. We'll talk about it when everyone comes back. There's supposed to be a mystic statue here somewhere. Everybody knows it. And they realize that the condor bears a striking resemblance to the constellation Cygnus. Not to mention, as Lily points out, the rocks are actually in the star location. Oh, this mystery is coming together. Dan Brown has nothing on this game. And then they ask me, uh, where's the red star supposed to be? And I guessed, I would think it would be at the bottom. They ask again. I suppose I'm wrong. Without any feedback, it's kind of hard to know. I guessed again. Oh, uh, left foot. That one seems to be right, because now everybody's heading off to check it out. I am not 100% positive where the left foot is supposed to be on this drawing, so I kind of hung back and followed them. Although I did get a little bit overeager, and I was like, oh, hey. Neil doesn't want me to look until everybody gets there. Okay, fine, Neil. There's a tile buried in the sand. When Will's flute touched it, there was a rumbling sound. The sky darkens. Hey, something huge is coming down. And then, I'm whisked away. Will, Will, Will. Turns out I'm in the sky, the sky garden. Rather a surprising uh, new area, given the monotony of the dungeon that we were walking around before. 
and you know, Will can see his friends way down there in the in the Nazca lines, wandering around, looking like tiny little ants. Some more uh, of the uh, Moon Tribe people are here. So I spoke to them and found out that this is their mode of transportation. There's four crystal balls in each for the four locations, and I'm supposed to find them in clockwise order. Interesting. Drop off the cliff at the front and back to find the upside down world. Huh. That's kind of a baffling thing to say, but I'm sure it'll pay off. And there's a save point back here, but to my disappointment, no free Dan and no new powers. Too bad. Having saved, I decided it was off to area one. Um, not really sure. I guess I just sort of picked the upper right as being the start of my clockwise journey after trying to jump off the side there real quick. I like the uh, one moon tribe I was talking about. So this is Sky Garden proper. Some enemies around, some chests. Let's see what we got. First new enemy is this sort of uh, ball worm thing. Um, it looks as though uh, the uh, when you defeat them, the balls fly around and they explode. And it looks as though they'll do damage, but and I avoided them as though they do, but I'm pretty sure they don't, actually. I was just kind of being paranoid. Off to the side, I can also see a crystal statue laser thing of some description, but I'll fight a lot more of those in a second. Uh, I made my way through the uh, first of four areas. And I uh, actually got to fight my first crystal statue. And I found out they also fire their hands at people, which is kind of cool, and then just get them back right away. That is a life skill, and it works on me seemingly every time. Kind of sad. Um, they're a little bit easier to fight from the sides, as it turns out. Um, the rocket's uh, hands don't spread out nearly so much, so I started doing that quite a bit. And uh, worked my way through the rest of the area found a chest, which contained a red jewel. Nice. From here, it was time to try the other side. Back of the garden. Clearly, Super Mario Galaxy ripped off this mechanic years later. This side has uh, some red crystal uh, statue guys. They're a little tougher. Their fists fly out and then come back, which is kind of interesting. And the uh, ball worms are much quicker this time around. We've also got one uh, added twist which is that when they die, their dropping spears are actually lethal. Um, you're supposed to be able to judge from the shadows on the ground where they're going to land, but uh, black shadows on a dark blue background is really not the best. So mostly I just try and steer clear altogether. Later on, I found the obligatory action RPG fireball bouncy things. Uh, it's just a staple of the genre. And I encountered for the first time in this game right there. Last of the enemies on the dark side gave me my very first defense up uh, for this dungeon, so that's kind of nice. And also my first hit by the stupid bomb drop thing. So I decided to rock some herbs. I had quite a few of them by this point, so it seems like a safe decision. And it's time to flip around back to the front. I encountered one more new enemy. This is a statue that stays immobile and actually kind of uh, worked me over a little bit at first there, I have to say. I wasn't really sure entirely uh, how to approach that, so I defeated the easy enemy first, because why not? And it turns out the sword returns to the statue after a short time, so you can't just uh, you can't just wander around. you got to start it over. So you hit the statue to start it off, and then the sword goes in the uh, eight kind of cardinal directions or whatever to uh, try and attack you. Are those the cardinal directions? I don't think I have that right. Turns out, hitting the sword three times will destroy it, and then the statue is immobile. And then you can grab the sweet, sweet treasure. I found the crystal ball. The first one. One of four. And then it was time to make my way back. Uh, oh, it turns out there was still one enemy and one chest left, so after flipping over to the other side, I made a quick detour and uh, explored a little bit so that I could... Uh, Drop it to the proper spot on this side, defeat the enemy, grab the chest. There's another herb to replace the one that I lost. And an HP increase. From 
there, it was time to head back to the hub and install my first crystal ball. This ought to be amazing. Oh. Sort of moves the platform. Well, that's a little less inspiring. I did a quick uh, save of my game in order to refill my health. And decided to head to the second area. Clockwise seemed like it was working out, so why don't I carry on? Um, so right away, uh, I noticed sort of an interesting feature here. Whoosh. Uh, turns out that the fists are spaced such that if you stand in the right spot and when you're coming at these enemies, you can actually just dodge them entirely. Not even really any effort required. And also, this neat wall sliding graphic. Not something we've encountered before either. So if you just come straight at them from below, you can just, the fists go harmlessly past you. Although the lasers will still get you. A little bit disappointed in myself on that one. Still, it's a big help in the fights. Especially when you're in sort of uh, limited side-to-side -side movement spaces like that. Defeated uh, what I could on this side and decided to flip over to dark side. So uh, over on this side, I came across a little bit of a problem right away. Which is that uh, I can defeat these worm enemies, but the crystal golems there are unreachable. Well, no problem. That sounds like a job for free, Dan. Maybe if I keep going, I can come back and get him. But this side was the same way. Defeat the ball worms. Not a big deal, but there's a crystal golem right in the middle, and no way to hit him from here, and no way forward either. So maybe clockwise not really working out as well as I'd hoped? I'm sure I'll be able to come back to it. Another save refill at the hub, and then it was off to Area 3, which features a new mechanic that you might have recognized already. But if you haven't figured out what it is, I'll leave it as a little bit of a surprise in just a moment. So after defeating some enemies, I found that I was barred on both sides by these sort of uh, pipe uh, column things, I guess, pipes, whatever. But there was a way to flip around here, so I took it. And sure enough, there are some switches here. Had to check out the environment a little bit first. Actually, on this side, there was a red jewel. Hmm, a switch. Why don't I press it and see? Yes, that's right. The uh, switch causes the pillars to pop up and down. And as you might expect, this has ramifications on the top side as well. Flipping back over. I discovered that the uh, pillars on this side were now down, and I could engage in some more crystal golem fighting. Um, you might have noticed a couple of times by now that it looks as though I'm taking a hit, although nothing seems to be happening on screen. Um, what's happening is there, there is that the lasers are flickering at a different rate than my recording software is recording, and so they just look invisible, but I rest assured that they are properly visible on the screen when you're actually playing the game. A little further along, I found a treasure chest that I couldn't seem to get at, and uh, after defeating this guy and picking up another defense increase, faster and stronger than ever before, I headed north to find a mysterious save point that seems to be inaccessible, but ah, here's a flip spot. This should help. Turns out, it didn't. The problem is that I don't have quite enough range to hit the switch with just will, uh, to be able to drop those platform the uh, pillars, rather. So this is one that I suppose I'll have to come back to. One puzzle for later. Uh, back down, um, across from the treasure chest, I found this handy ramp. And uh, when I didn't botch the uh, <laughs> execution there, when you do, you have to go up and around and kind of make your way back there. Oh, here's the topside version of the bouncy fire enemy from bottom side. If you do manage to make it, even if I had, I would have run straight into those pillars. Not super helpful. So it's time to flip around to the bottom side, back of the garden, see what I can see over here. Oh, great. Okay, well, can't go that way, and now, oh. Hopefully on the other side I can get past them, but, ah, no! No! No, keep away. Keep away from me! That worked. There we go. Defeated this 
red crystal golem after he got some pretty good shots in on me because I'm not paying attention and I'm bad at video games. And in defeating him, a trap. Thanks, guys. Moving on. Down here, I found a red crystal golem standing on uh, sort of a suspicious spot there. step on the tile, it makes a noise. Well, that really seems like something I should be messing around with, and that group of uh, tiles there in the middle sort of looks like that group of pillars on the other side that I couldn't mess with before. Oh, and here's a sword statue. Again, none of the names I'm using for anything are even remotely canon. I have no idea what they are. I'm just sort of making them up as I go along. So after handily defeating the sword, I discovered that I could move the statue. Well, two plus two equals four. Let's drag him over here. And watch it pop up. Outstanding. Finished off the uh, enemies on this side, some red crystal golems, and finally, a strength increase. Excellent. It didn't seem like there was much left to do on uh, this side of the of this area. So after carefully traversing the fiery, bouncy things, I headed back to the top. From here, I was able to destroy these statues in one smooth movement. Very nice me. And here we go. For my troubles, my second crystal ball. Excellent. Quick hop down from there. Still can't get at that save point that's up top. Although, interestingly enough, they show up on your map. I actually didn't even realize that before, like, right at this moment. I decided to swing around to the other side just one more time and see if I couldn't accomplish anything there, but no, my range still just is not good enough. Keep that mystery in mind. Placed the crystal ball, watched another platform slide into place, and decided that at this point it was a pretty good length of video that I'd recorded, so it was time to save and call it a day. Still one more area completely unexplored and an unsolved mystery in the other one. We'll just have to save that for next time on Nathan Plays Illusion of Gaia. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next mission.